Welcome to this brief broadcast on social mechanisms. I'm Professor Walters, and I will be your guide through this very brief synopsis or overview of the theoretical approach known as social mechanisms. Many of the difficulties students experience in understanding social mechanisms result from the lack of consensus among even the greatest of sociologists in the generation that formulated the theoretical approach. Thus, there's a surprising lack of clarity in the explanatory materials available for reading or for assignments. Similarly, many sociologists to this date have failed to incorporate social mechanisms into their own theoretical or empirical research work. Thus, finding or locating examples can be challenging, and especially examples that are accessible in an undergraduate sociological theory course. The concept of social mechanisms is part of the essential heritage of the work of Robert K. Merton and James Coleman. For Merton especially, the goal of theorizing is to develop fine-grained middle-range theories which point to the intermediary level between pure narrative storytelling or case studies and those universal covering laws that seek to provide broad causal explanations at an abstract level. These middle-range theories should also provide clear articulations or explanations of the social mechanisms that generate or give rise to observed or empirical relationships between what we want to explain and that which explains it. Additionally, developing uh, fine-grained middle-range theories should fill in the gaps of the black box and sociological theories, the black box that connects to macro-level sociological or social facts. An essential piece of social, me social mechanisms or using social mechanisms focuses on making connections between the macro level and the micro level. It is a macro to micro and then micro to macro model, although recall in our earlier uh, weeks of study, we also introduced the idea of the meso level of organization as being essential for understanding and explaining social mechanisms. The general thrust of the model is that proper explanations of macro-level change and variation entail or require showing how macro states at one point in time influence the behavior of individuals and how these actions then are interactions among individuals at the micro level can or do add up to new macro states at a later time. That is, uh, again, uh, introducing some of the other theorists, uh, such as Giddens, key to understanding social mechanisms is to see a change from time one to time two, and then to see how states, institutional states, at time one change as the direct result of the rational purposive action, individual and collective, at the micro level, thereby fortifying or transforming those institutions at time two. I use here this example, uh, again from uh, Stintcom. Mechanisms in a theory are defined here as bits of theory about entities at different 
levels, that is the individual level, than the main enti entities that are theorized about, that is like societies or groups or, or organizations. And these serve to make the higher level theory more supple, more accurate, or more general. So here at the individual level or the face-to-face -face level, we can ask the absurd question, but not so absurd to clarify some broader universal theory from, for example, Karl Marx. Is the owner of this supermarket really more like a bodega, a bourgeois capitalist? There are three core features of mechanism-based explanations. The first, methodological individualism, and that is that elementary causal agents are always individuals, individuals engaged in purposeful action. Many of you may have seen already some of my comments on the discussion where an abstract entity at an aggregate level is followed by an active verb. The causal agent or the agent capable of action is always at the individual level. And so there are many ways of, of talking about the phenomena of having an abstract entity followed by a verb, misplaced concreteness, anthropomorphizing uh, society or anthro Morphizing this abstract entity. Second is the primacy of the analytical. And here, the key idea is that the theoretical model that bubbles up includes only essential elements. And third, that variables are replaced by social mechanisms. Statistical associations thus are replaced by meaningful connections between events as a mode or form of explanation. Hedstrom and Swedberg identify three types of social mechanisms, a typology that is now generally accepted among theorists who use social mechanisms. First, situational mechanisms. Situational mechanisms systematically and precisely link a social structure to beliefs, desires, and opportunities for individual actors. Second, individual mechanisms, individual action mechanisms, these describe how a specific combination of individual desires, beliefs, and opportunities at the micro level operate. And third, transformation, transformational mechanisms articulate how individual interactions and actions are transformed into collective outcomes, both intended and unintended. So remember that at the beginning to make life easy and to foster or facilitate a deeper level understanding of social mechanisms, we are beginning with only the first type situational mechanisms that precisely link social structure via meso-level groups or organizations to beliefs, desires, and opportunities of individual actors. That is, these situational mechanisms constrain or provide opportunities. They shape typically through socialization, the beliefs and desires of the individual actors. And so we are looking 
we are looking at just the, the part of the diagram that appears so frequently in text that is circled on the left, the macro to micro, typically mediated through meso-level groups or organizations. We will begin by examining constraints, opportunities, beliefs, desires, values, as these are constrained or uh, the result of socialization from meso-level or macro-level institutionalized patterns of behavior. So social roles is perhaps the, the quintessential uh, connector between the meso level and the micro level. But likewise, some of the examples will, will show beliefs, desires, and values. Perhaps the best um, and most recent work, uh, a visible work in it that uses or uh, employs social mechanisms, is the work of Annette Leroux on unequal childhoods. And so if we look, for example, at dramatic differences in educational outcomes for impoverished children versus advantaged children, one of the aspects noted by Leroux that is a social mechanism, a causal mechanism, is the facility with which uh, upper-class, professional, middle-class parents negotiate or communicate with teachers on behalf of the children. This, uh, and and, and the, the strategies and values they impart to their children for success in school. And so in looking at her work, we see something other than broad, vague terms, what we see is individuals interacting at the micro level to change social, institutional, or structural outcomes. At the end of the slides, I have provided uh, a list of uh, references. Again, remember, in the first week, we're going to be working only, or the first, actually the first four weeks, we're going to be working only with situational mechanisms, looking at the ways in which individual belief stars, values, and opportunities are constrained or opened by macro-level or meso-level institutionalized patterns of interaction and resources.